Well, hello, welcome to the Cenex Home Workshop. Are you having problems connecting a new smart home or security device to your Wi-Fi? Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to connect to the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network during the setup and configuration of a smart home or security device. It's very common that devices such as light bulbs, security cameras, detectors, and many others will only work on the 2.4 gigahertz band and not the five gigahertz band. This can sometimes be confusing during the setup process. Well, in this video, we're going to explain the difference between the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz bands and how you can ensure you connect to the correct band when configuring your device. So stick around. Okay, so what are we talking about when we say 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz or even a 6 gigahertz which is available in some new Wi-Fi routers. In our context gigahertz is a unit of measurement of radio frequency. When we say 2.4 gigahertz we are saying 2.4 billion cycles per second. Just like on your favorite FM radio station who may broadcast at say 98.9 .9 megahertz which is 98.9 .9 million cycles per second, most Wi-Fi routers can broadcast and receive at two different frequencies, 2.4 and 5. These are called dual band routers. Okay, so what are the differences between 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz? The lower frequency band of 2.4 GHz provides the best coverage or range, but transmits data at slower speeds. Lower frequencies will also penetrate solid objects like walls or ceilings better. The 5 GHz band provides less coverage or range, but can transmit data at a much higher rate. Higher data rates means better download speeds. Interference can also be a concern on the 2.4 GHz band. Many household devices will also use 2.4 such as microwaves, garage door openers, wireless telephones, and many more. This could cause overcrowding on the 2.4 GHz band, thereby affecting your ability to communicate between devices. It may slow down your network. The 5 GHz band tends to have less overcrowding because fewer devices use it and it has more channels than the 2.4 GHz band. Smart home device manufacturers tend to use 2.4 GHz for multiple reasons. Can provide better range and is better at penetrating walls and ceilings and other obstacles. This would benefit devices like outdoor cameras. 2.4 GHz chipsets are much less expensive than 5 GHz. Most smart devices use very small amounts of data, so it is more suited to the 2.4 GHz band. Routers use a Service Set Identifier, SSID for short, to name your Wi-Fi network, also referred to as a network ID or name. This is the name you see when you do a Wi-Fi connection on your device, and it shows you a list of available Wi-Fi networks. Routers come with a default SSID, but you can also change it to something more applicable. If you didn't set your own custom SSID, then you may see it written on a label somewhere on your router or modem, especially if it was installed by your internet provider. Many, if not most, smart security devices, like cameras, light bulbs, smart plugs, require that you connect to it using the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network during setup. This is because during setup you need to configure your device over Wi-Fi, but your new device has no idea what your network SSID is or the password to connect. To get around this, the device emits its own Wi-Fi network or hotspot, which is using the 2.4 GHz band. This is why your smartphone or tablet needs to be on the 2.4 GHz band as well, otherwise it will never be able to communicate with the device. Setting up your smartphone or tablet to use the 2.4 GHz band could be as easy as opening your Wi-Fi settings on your phone, 
locating your 2.4 GHz SSID in the list, then connecting to it. However, an issue arises when your router has not been set up to use two separate SSIDs, one for 2.4 and one for 5. You can tell if you have two separate SSIDs by looking at the names. You should see a 2, 2.4, or maybe a 2G in the name to indicate it is a 2.4 GHz network. For 5 GHz, you would typically have a 5 or a 5G in its name. If this is your situation and you're all set, just select the 2.4 GHz network and you should be good to go. So now let's address the issue which likely brought you to this video. Your smart or security device requires that you use 2.4 GHz during setup and your device will just not connect no matter what you do. Throwing it across the room didn't even work. That might be a bit extreme, but I'm sure it felt good. Now, there are many different configurations for home Wi-Fi networks, with many different routers possible with each having its own quirks. The first possible issue is that you have separate SSIDs or network names, one for 2.4 GHz and one for 5 GHz. When you set up the new smart device, you provided the wrong SSID or password. You can confirm if you have separate SSIDs by looking at your available Wi-Fi list on your phone or tablet. You should see two networks, one with having something like uh, 2.4 or 2, 2-4, 2G, or maybe 2.4G, somewhere in the name. Make sure you provide this SSID and its associated password when asked during the setup of your device. If you didn't configure the SSID, then you may find the SSID and password on a label somewhere on your router. The important point here is that you must use the SSID and password for the 2.4 GHz network and not the 5 GHz. Next up is a scenario where you have a dual band router that uses a single SSID and password. This would be identified by looking at your available Wi-Fi networks and seeing only one name in the list for your home network. In this case, your router is also likely using a feature called band steering. Band steering will automatically select what it believes is the best band 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz. This is based on multiple factors, but one of them is the signal strength. Band steering will typically try to steer your devices to the 5 GHz band where possible. However, some 2.4 GHz smart devices will not connect to a network using band steering because of some compatibility limitations. If you have a newer router with band steering enabled, then this may be your issue. To resolve a possible issue with band steering, you have a couple of possible solutions. The first, which many swear by, is to take your smart device out of range of your 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Remember, 5 GHz has a shorter range than a 2.4 GHz, so at some point, if you continue to move away from your router, you will lose the 5 GHz network and will only have 2.4 GHz available. At this point, you can perform the setup of your device with your phone and tablet and it should now connect. The distance from your router that you will need to create will depend on your environment like walls, construction type, and router. So if you don't like the idea of walking down the street with an extension cord, you could perform some router configurations that should resolve the issue as well. This option entails you disabling the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band by accessing your router and turning off the 5 GHz radio. To do this, follow these steps. First, log into your router by opening your browser and typing in the router address. If you are not sure what the address is, it may be on a label somewhere on the router or in the manual. These are some typical router addresses that may work. When the login screen appears, enter the credentials. Again, if you don't know the username or password, then it may be on the label somewhere on the router or in the user manual. 
Once you've logged in, you need to find an option for turning off the 5 GHz radio. In my router, it is under the wireless menu and then the professional tab. It should say something like 5 GHz radio enable or on and off, something to that effect. If you can't find it, you could also look for an option to disable the band steering. You can then try to set up the device once one of these options are disabled and it should connect. Remember to turn them back on after the setup is complete. Now the last possible solution to your 2.4 GHz dilemma is to separate your 2.4 and 5 GHz networks. This would only apply to those that show only one SSID in their list of available Wi-Fi networks. To do this, we will need to modify some settings in your router. Here is the procedure to set up the SSIDs on an ASUS RT-AC66U B1 router. Your setup may be slightly different depending on your router, but all routers will have the same settings somewhere within their configuration screens. You could do a Google search for SSID settings in your router's model to find your exact procedure. First, log into your router as described in the previous solution. Once logged in, look for an option for setting up SSIDs for both 2.4 and 5 GHz. In my case, on an ASUS AC66U router, these settings are on the main page in plain view. Change each to an SSID that describes its band and enter a password. In my case, I have named 2.4 GHz to Cenex 2G and the 5 GHz to Cenex 5G. Once done, save your settings and go to your available Wi-Fi list on your phone or tablet. You should now see the two SSIDs you just created. Make sure you change the SSID and password on other Wi-Fi devices that are connecting to your Wi-Fi network. They will also need to know the new credentials. Now, within the device setup process, when it asks for your Wi-Fi network, you can provide the new 2.4 GHz SSID and its password. Your device should now connect. If you don't have credentials or simply don't want to mess around in your router settings, then it may be best if you contact your internet service provider and ask for help connecting your mobile device to the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. With that, you should now be able to connect to your smart device using the 2.4 GHz network and perform the necessary configuration. Well, that completes this video. If you found it useful, we would really appreciate if you give us a like and subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments or questions, please be sure to leave them below. Have a great day. Ciao.